Building a Second Brain is a productivity system developed by Tiago Forte. His book was published in June 2022 and has been having an impact on people's lives ever since then. The Second Brain productivity system allows us to capture the ideas and thoughts that we have and encounter every day and use them in the future. To do this, we use our personal management system to harness the full potential of everything that we capture and encounter in our everyday life. If you want a bit more background about the whole idea of building your own second brain, you can check out this video up there. When first beginning to build your own second brain, it can be quite difficult to know where to start. So this video is going to give you eight simple steps that you can follow to build your own second brain. The first thing you need to do is to decide what you actually want to capture. The second brain productivity system revolves around the code method. Code stands for capture, organize, distill, and express. We are constantly surrounded by information and it's no surprise that many people, including myself, have a problem with information overload where we are exposed to so much information that we don't actually know what to do or how to deal with it. This is where the second brain productivity system comes in and especially the capture element of the code method. If we try to capture everything that we come across, we don't have enough time to do that. There aren't enough hours in the day to capture everything that you hear, everything that you see. Instead, we need to capture what really resonates with us and what we think is truly noteworthy. If you try to capture too much, there's no point in capturing anything at all. Whatever you decide to capture, it doesn't have to be a big long paragraph or a book chapter it can be as small or as simple as a short sentence or a quote that you have seen or heard. Deciding what you want to capture is all about quality, not quantity. The second step to building your own second brain is to decide what apps you want to use. There is an abundance of apps out there. There's over 5.4 million on all the app stores combined, which can make it quite overwhelming and quite daunting to actually pick apps which suit us and which we actually enjoy using. The most important thing to understand here is that there are no perfect apps to build your own second brain. What I prefer may not be what you prefer and what I think works for me will not work for you. That's just how it is. It's all about choosing apps that you're comfortable with and apps that you enjoy using. I posted this video recently which you can check out on the channel as well. Make sure that you go over and check that to find out all the best apps that you can use to make your own second brain. The third step in building your own second brain is to get comfortable and get familiar with the para system. So the para system is the way that you're going to organize everything that you capture in your second brain. Para stands for projects, areas, resources and archives. Each one of these things has its own unique function in your own second brain and each one needs to have its own dedicated folder. Personally, I recommend putting these folders onto a cloud drive so it could be Google Docs, it could be iCloud, it could be Microsoft OneNote, whatever app you're using, I recommend that you use a cloud app so that you can have access to this information no matter where you are or no matter what you're doing. It's really important that you understand the differences between the four parts of the Paris system. Firstly, projects are things that you're working on right now which have a definite start and a definite end point. Everything that you have captured that is related to this project is stored in that projects folder. For example, if you want to lose two stone in a month, you may have a folder called losing two stone in August or whatever month it may be. Inside this folder, you will have anything that is related to that project. So you may have things like diet plans, exercise logs, home workouts, whatever it may be. As long as it's dedicated to helping you towards your project or helping you towards your goal, it deserves a place inside your project folder. Your areas folder is slightly different. Areas are general topics or general themes. So for example, your area might be health, but inside that area, you might have losing weight or you might have losing two stone. Your areas are things that you're committed to over time that don't necessarily have an exact endpoint, unlike projects. The resources folder is where everything that you want to use in the future is kept. This is kind of a catch-all area for things that don't fit into the projects or areas folders. And lastly, we have archives, which is basically cold storage for all your information and ideas which you have used in the past or which you do not need to use again. Once you get the power system implemented in your own second brain, you will see the benefits almost instantly. It's a really easy and organized way to store all the information that you capture and it helps you find it in the future whenever you may need it. The next step is to practice progressive summarization. Progressive summarization is a technique to process all the information and all the notes that you have already captured. The idea is that you're summarizing and condensing a piece of information in small spurts over a short period of time. It's not a tool that's gonna to help you remember anything. Instead, it's a tool that is gonna make information and key points easier to find, easier to discover, and easier to use in the future. The act of progressive summarization has five layers, which you can see here in this diagram from Tiago Forte's website. It's important that when you're doing this progressive summarization that you're only highlighting the really key points or the essence of what whatever note or any idea is about. 
you should really only be highlighting whenever you need to use something as well. If you highlight something now, and but you don't need to use it for another two months, by the time that two months comes around, you're going to be forgetting what you highlighted. The next step is learning to express yourself. Learning to express yourself is one of the hardest things you can do. This is mainly due to the fear of what other people may think or what other people may say about what you're doing or what you're showing. Instead of being fearful or worried about what other people may say or think, we can change this to a more positive mindset of thinking about the constructive criticism that other people may provide or the ideas and other concepts that other people may think about or help us with along the way. Now is the time to start expressing yourself and everybody has the tools that you need to do it. We are constantly connected to each other through the internet 24 seven. We all use social media apps which can act as our own way of expressing ourselves. The best way to do this is by getting onto Twitter, getting onto Reddit, LinkedIn, Instagram, whatever it may be. Get on there and start expressing what you know or express what you're working on. For example, you're sitting there watching me on YouTube this is my way of expressing what I know and what I am passionate about. There are so many platforms out there to express yourself that really there's no excuse for not doing it. The hardest thing about it is getting started with it. I know when I started this channel it was difficult for me to do, but I'm glad I've done it and I've seen the growth since I started to now. Next we need to understand the relationship between divergence and convergence. It's impossible for us to come up with creative ideas on demand. That's what the code method in your second brain is there for. It allows you to put all the digital notes that you've taken to work and allows your brain to do the more creative things that it is meant to be doing. By working through the code method we are working through a standardized routine which allows you to see the relationship between divergence and convergence. Every creative idea or concept begins with an act of divergence where you expose yourself to new ideas or concepts or new ways of thinking. Think of a whiteboard covered in lots of different theories or think of a photographer with lots of pictures spread out in front of him. It's a wee bit chaotic and a little bit messy but that is what the divergence is all about. However, when we switch to convergence we start to think about what is truly essential and this starts us on the journey to hitting publish or to hitting send. This model can be seen in any creative endeavor. Think about a writer coming out with a new story. They will diverge by collecting lots of information, by researching historical facts and coming up with new characters that they will use in their story. They will then switch to convergence where they will start to bring together the whole story. They will start by creating outlines, making plots and then ultimately writing a draft and finishing off with the actual finished book. Once you understand this relationship between divergence and convergence you will become a much more creative individual. The next step is to build organisational habits. When we are organised and efficient, we are much more receptive to new ideas and new concepts. Effective and efficient organisation is vital in any productivity system, and that is no different with the second brain productivity system. With the amount of information that we capture each day, it can be quite easy to become unorganised, but there are three simple habits and three simple things that you can do to stay on top of your second brain and to stay organised. The first habit is to have project checklists. These checklists allow you to easily see what you've done and what also needs to be completed in any project that you're working on. The second habit is to have weekly and monthly reviews. This allows you to assess how your second brain is progressing and allows you to make any changes that you need to at that point in time. Your second brain is a very fluid organism so don't be afraid to change things up or to try something new like a new app. The third habit is to start noticing things inside your second brain. You should always be on the look for opportunities to edit, highlight or move about things in your second brain. All of these things help with the discoverability of ideas and the potential for action ability in your second brain. Organization is key in any productivity system and the second brain is no different. And finally, you need to stay consistent. Regardless of what apps or software you're using in your second brain, you need to keep doing what you're doing. Everyone on earth has a unique brain in their heads and everybody on earth can have their own unique second brain. What works for me may not work for you and vice versa. However, as long as you're comfortable doing what you're doing, keep doing it. Stay consistent with the process that you're using. If you stay consistent with your second brain, you'll be able to organize your digital life and unlock the potential of your own creativity. And those are the eight steps that I believe will help you build your own second brain. If you have any other advice or any other steps that other people can use, leave them down in the comments. If you made it this far, make sure that you like the video and subscribe to the channel for more content just like this. Finally now, thanks for watching and I'll see you very soon for another video. Goodbye. Ooh.